hello students welcome to my channel engineers academy now we are going to solve this uh, sample problem from chapter 5 and this top this is related to topics the that is the beams external loads right so uh, in this particular problems what we do is that uh, we reduce these distributed loads into a concentrated loads right and then we use the chapter 3 analysis that is the equilibrium condition to analyze to determine the reactions at the supports at A and B, right? So, in this sample problem, it is said that determine the equivalent concentrated loads and external reactions for the simply supported beam, which is subjected to the distributed load shown, right? So, uh, in order to det determine these external reactions, we have to convert these distributed loads into the concentrated loads. And then we will be able to apply those equilibrium conditions to determine the, the external reactions at point A and B at the supports, right? So, these problems are very simple if you people just un uh, understand two steps, right? So, the first step is that you people need to convert the distributed loads into the concentrated loads. And then you, you you people need to find the distance of the concentrated loads, the, dis, uh, the distance of that concentrated load from either end, either from end A or either from end B. This whole procedure is related to that centroid topic. So, in order to convert uh, these loads on this given beam, what we will do is that we will select the areas, right? So, the areas uh, associated with the load distribution in this particular problem, we can divide that area into two uh, areas, right? So, into two known areas, right? So, if I, if I draw a rectangle here, so we can divide this area into two areas, right? So, one is rectangular area and the other one is triangular area, right? So, then how to find the concentrated loads, uh, how to find the resultant of this rectangular distributed load. So, uh, that resultant concentrated load will be equal to the area of uh, this rectangle, right? So, I can write that uh, the concentrated load, let us say that the this rectangle represents the concentrated load, let us say uh, Ra right or uh, let us say that uh, this is let us say area 1. So, the concentrated load that it is representing is let us say R1. So, this R1 will be equal to the integration of dr1. So, what is meant by this dr1, right? So, if we select a differential area, if we select a differential uh, distributed load, from this given rectangular load, right? This given rectangular distributed load, right? So, then what will be the area of this small differential distributed load, right? So, the area of this small differential load or we can say that this small differential load will be equal to, if I say that uh, this is dr, so then this dr will be, we can say that this dr1 will be equal to uh, this height of this uh, differential load that is a uh, 1200 Newton per meter. This is the intensity, right? So, this is 1200 Newton per meter. M since this is the load per meter, right? So, we have to multiply it with distance, right? So, this distance is dx, right? I can say that this differential uh, distributed load is distributed over an area of d uh, over a length of dx, right? So, we have to multiply this with dx, right? So, then we can say that this dr will be equal to 1200, right? And this dx is given in meters, right? So, this meter will cancel out. So, we will be left with 1200 Newton into dx, right? So, the units are in Newtons, right? So, this will be 1200 dx. So, what does this mean that if we add up all the differential distributed loads along this length x. So, that will give us the area of this rectangle, right? So, this means that R1 equals to the integration of the differential distributed load will be equal to the area 
area of uh, the distributed load right so i can write that this is area of the given distributed load for a particular portion of distributed loads right so now uh, in this this is very we have to apply this integration but since we we can find the area of a rectangle directly so then there is no need to apply this integration but the concept is like this right so then uh, we can find that r1 right so the concentrated load uh, for this rectangular portion of uh, this distributed load will be equal to r1 and that will be equal to the area of this uh, green rectangle and that area will be 1200 newton per meter into this length right so this is 6 plus 4 so this is 10 so we can see that this is 1200 into 10 so this will be 12000 newton right meter will be cancelled out with meter so we will be left with newton right so the first job is to convert these distributed loads into the concentrated loads right and similarly we can convert this uh, this triangular distributed load into concentrated load as well right so we can say that let's say that this area is represented by 2 this is area 2 let's say so then its concentrated load is let's say r2 right so r2 will be equal to the area of this area 2 right so we can say that the area is triangular so we can apply the triangle area formula right so we can write that this is half base into h base into the height of a triangle right so we can say that this is half and the base of this triangle is from here to here so this is 6 and the height is this is the height right so this whole distributed load is 2800 and this here the intensity of the load is 1200 newton meter so this means that this height is 2800 minus 1200 right so 2800 i will multiply this with 2800 minus 1200 so this is this is 1600 right so this means that the height of this triangular area is 1600 newton per meter right so this r2 will be equal to 4800 newton now once these concentrated loads are calculated then the second step is that we need to locate we need to identify the position of this concentrated load that where we have to position these loads on the given beam right so then we have to locate the distances of this r1 and r2 from either end of this beam of this given beam so we have to find the location of r1 and r2 from either end a or from either end b right so then how we we find that so we normally these concentrated loads act at the centroid of the of these areas right so area 1 and area 2 right so or we can say that the line of action of these concentrated loads will pass through the centroids of these uh, areas right so now what will be the centroid of what is the location of the centroid of this rectangular area right so since the centroid of this rectangular area will be located at half of the of this length right so this means that uh, this r1 will be located at a distance of uh, since this whole distance is 10 so that r1 will be located at a distance of 5 meters right so now if i represent those r1 and r2 on this diagram right so let's say that this is my r1 so this r1 will be located at a distance of 5 meters from either end right so this distance will be this distance will be 5 meters and this is that r1 whose magnitude is 12000 newton right and then we can find the centroid of this rectangular area as well right so the centroid of rectangular area we have already discussed that that the centroid of uh, let's say that the centroid of that rectangular area 2 is let's say x bar 2 so that x bar 2 
will be equal to 1 divided by 3 of the height of that rectangular area right and this 1 divided by 3 h is from this base right. So, and from the effect and from the apex this x 2 will be at a distance of 2 by 3 h this we already know right. So, now if you want to find x 2 the centroid of that triangular area. So, then that will be equal to 1 divided by 3 and the height of this triangular area is 6 right. So, we have to multiply this with 6 right. So, this means that this is 2 meters right. So, since this x 2 is from the base right. So, then this means that if I represent this r 2 on this diagram right. So, let us say that this is my r 2 that r 2 will be located somewhere here and then this distance will be this distance will be 2 meters right. And if we use this formula, so then this will be if we use this formula, so then this will be x divided by 2 divided by 3 into 6. So, this is 2 4 right. So, this is 4 meters right. So, from the f from the apex of this uh, triangle this r 2 will be located at a distance of 4 meters right. So, this length is 4 meters right. So, either we can find this 2 meter distance or either we can find this 4 meter distance right. So, if this is 2 meters then this is 4 meters right. So, once we find the concentrated loads and once we locate these concentrated loads on a given beam then we are then we will be able to apply the equilibrium conditions in order to find the reactions at the supports right. So, now we can remove these distributed loads and we can replace these distributed loads by these concentrated loads at given positions right. So, now from this we can conclude that R 1 whose magnitude is 12000 Newton it is located at a distance of 5 meters. So, now this is that 12000 Newton this is that free body diagram and this 12000 Newton is R 1 and it is located at a distance of 5 meters right and similarly this this is that R 2. 4800 Newton and from this point it is located at a distance of 4 meters and this this distance is 1 meter right since this whole distance is 5 meters. So, 5 minus 4 so this is 1 meter. So, 4 minus 1 so this distance the distance between R 1 and R 2 is 3 meters right. So, here the, that 3 meters is shown right. So, now we have reduced that problem of distributed loads into a very simple problem that we have already learnt in chapter 3. Now, if we apply the summation of moment about point A equals to 0. So, then we will be able to find this R B reaction right. So, now as we can see that this R B is producing the counterclockwise moment about that point A. So, I will write R B and the perpendicular distance of this R B from that point A is 10 meters since the whole length of this beam is 10 meters. So, I will multiply this with 10 right. Similarly, this 12000 Newton is producing clockwise moment about that point A. So, I will write minus this is 12000 and the perpendicular distance of this 12000 Newton force from that point A is 5 meters. And similarly, this R 2 4800 Newton force is producing the clockwise moment about that point A. So, I will right minus 4800 and the perpendicular distance of this 4800 Newton force on that point A is 5 plus 3. So, this is 8 and this is equal to 0 right. So, we can find this value of R B using calculator. So, this is 9840 Newtons. So, from this we can say that R B equals to 9840 Newtons. Similarly, if we apply the summation of moment about point B equals to 0 or if we apply the summation of forces along Y equals to 0. So, both of these equation will give us R A right. So, I will apply this equation right. So, R A R A is acting in the positive Y direction. This 12000 Newton force is acting in the negative Y direction and this 4800 Newton force is acting in the negative Y direction. So, I will write minus 12000 minus 4800 and this R B is acting in the positive y direction. So, plus R B and R B magnitude is 9840. So, I will write 9840 and this is equal to 0. So, this is we can say that this is minus 12000 minus 4800 plus 9840 
So, this is equal to minus 6960. So, I can write that R A minus 6960 is equal to 0 or we can say that R A is equal to 6960 newtons. So, we can say that R A is equal to 6.96 kilo newton if we divide it by 1000 and similarly we can say that R B is equal to 9.84 kilo newton. So, this is the solution of this sample problem. I hope uh, this discussion will help you in your learning. A few people think that this helps in your learning. So, kindly subscribe my channel and like this particular video if you people want me to solve such more problems related to the distributed loads.